Hi, this is Asin Now and you're watching The Weekly Wrap. First up, Indonesia is experiencing abnormal weather. Days of rain caused landslides and flooding in Java Island last weekend with 43 reported deaths. 19 people are still missing and 14 had suffered serious injuries. Rescuers are still searching for survivors. Moving on, Catholic church leaders and rights groups in the Philippines expressed concern over the sharp rise in police killings. At least 40 alleged criminals were killed since Rodrigo Duterte won the presidential election in May. Just last weekend, police killed 11 suspected drug dealers in response to Duterte's pledge to get tough on crime. The president also warned police officers involved in drug trafficking that they too will face the same fate. In Malaysia, police have formed a special task force to investigate the murder of opposition politician Bill Kayong. Kayong was shot in the neck as he stopped his truck at a traffic light junction in Miri, Sarawak. Just hours after the shooting, there were two other unrelated shootings that killed one man and left two injured. Next, a United Nations backed tribunal is expected to deliver its verdict on the Philippines' challenge to China's claims on the South China Sea. Tensions have risen dramatically in recent years as China sought to secure its claims by building artificial islands suitable for military bases. Recently, a Filipino fisherman filmed an encounter with Chinese coast guards who chased the fishermen away from one of their traditional fishing grounds. Aside from the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan also have overlapping claims with China. Moving on, seven Indonesian crewmen were abducted in Philippine waters. Terrorist group Abu Sayyaf have demanded a ransom of 20 million ringgit from the vessel owner for the release of the hostages. In response, the Indonesian government urged prompt action to be taken by Philippines to ensure safety in its waters. The rise of sea hijackings prompted Indonesia, the Philippines and Malaysia to agree to carry out coordinated patrols to secure the region's waterways. However, the patrols between the three countries have yet to start. Finally, who says that money cannot buy you friends? Singaporean company Pali Asia is now providing friends for hire. You are now able to hire a workout partner, party buddy, groomsmen, bridesmaids, or even a partner to meet your parents for a fee. We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner, The Nation TV, for the latest roundup from the Northern ASEAN region. Thank you very much, Kuala Lumpur. And now let's take a look over the past week in the Upper ASEAN region, starting off with Thailand. State Councillor of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, is wrapping up her final day of a three-day official visit to Thailand during June the 23rd to the 25th, following an invitation by the Thai Prime Minister. She is accompanied by some top officials, including Myanmar's Foreign Affairs Minister, the Planning and Finance Minister, and the Labour, Immigration and Population Minister. She was expected to sign the Memorandum of Understanding on Labour Cooperation and Agreement on Empowerment of Workers. Suu Kyi also visited Myanmar's migrant workers in Samut Sakhon province, where a large population of Myanmar workers live and a temporary shelter for Myanmar displaced persons in Rataburi province. Turning to Vietnam, the railway that runs between the northern and the southern parts of the country is about to resume services after a bridge repair. A railway bridge was hit by a barge last March, causing the structure to collapse and halting north-south railway services for several months. The barge's two drivers were arrested following the incident, although they claimed that the cause was due to an engine malfunction. To date, passengers have been traveling by bus between Binh Dong Province and Dong Nai Province between catching a train. And in Cambodia, a plot of medieval towns from the Khmer Empire in the Cambodian jungle has been uncovered by a team of archaeologists conducting the largest ever study using laser technology. 
The findings could help solve the mysteries surrounding the rise and fall of the empire and the extinct capital Angkor, home to the most famous Cambodian historical monuments and archaeological treasures on the planet. In 2012, the team carried out an aerial survey with LIDAR technology, a remote sensing method that uses laser pulses and light to generate three-dimensional information based on topography, confirming the existence of metropolises which are now covered by vegetation. And now back to Thailand security. Authorities in Thailand are now under fire once again after a British court has ordered bankruptcy on the maker of bogus explosives detecting devices TT200 following his earlier conviction and imprisonments. The Prime Minister and Defence Minister were trying to brush aside the allegations that military and police leaders had benefited from purchases of the expensive but fake device, which has been proved wholly ineffective by British authorities at detecting bombs and explosives. Thailand, like a number of countries, deployed GT-200 and a similar device in their security and general crime-busting operations for a long period of time, starting before 2010. Subsequent statistics show that many deaths, injuries and convictions resulted directly from the use of GT-200, which was eventually put out of commission. The security authorities in these countries may not have deserved to be fully blamed for using GT-200 as they also fell victim to such an effective fraudulent scheme. But the general publics in their countries expect a greater expression of responsibilities by their respective governments. And Lao Prime Minister Thang Lun Si Sulit will pay an official visit to Thailand during July 5th to the 6th when he will meet with Princess Serin Thorn and next, his counterpart, General Prayut Chan Ocha. The venue for the meeting between the newly elected Lao Premier and the Princess, who has been beloved by the people in both Mekong River sites, has not been designated as has the venue where Thong Lun will meet with Prayut. It will be Thong Lun's second overseas trip since holding the position in April. His first visit to another country is Vietnam recently. And that wraps up this edition of ASEAN Wrap from the Upper ASEAN region. This has been Sathapat Pat Thong, and now back to Kuala Lumpur. Thank you, Bangkok, and thanks for watching. I'm Victoria Brown. Have a pleasant weekend.